Okay, so we've looked at the law of sines yesterday. And to start off today, I gave you ones where I didn't give you the picture. And I did that on purpose. This first one here, pretend I did not give you this little note here that B was obtuse. When you look at that, what should throw up red flags to you? I have an angle and it's opposite side, right? Which I have to have that or I can't use the law of sines. All of these, you'll notice there's an angle and it's opposite side. All of them have that pair. The third piece of information can either be another angle or an, a, another side. But when that third piece of information is a second side, we have to watch for what? Yeah, if, that, if that second side is bigger than the one that's across from the angle, then it's possible to have two different triangles. Remember? That's why I had to tell you that this is obtuse. Because when you make this triangle, here's my angle A, here's my side A over here. It could look like that, or it could look like that. Because since this side here, the one that's opposite our angle is shorter than this one, there's room for it to fold in. If it were longer, it couldn't fold in like that. It wouldn't. It would go past the, the vertex. But since it's shorter, it can fold in. So what that's telling us is when we draw this triangle to solve it, we've got to have an obtuse angle. That obtuse angle is going to be B. Either one of these can be A, the other one will be C. So this is little A, little B, little C. This is 29 degrees, 8 inches, and 15 inches. So our first step is going to be to find angle B. So 8 over the sine of 29. That's our side over the sine of its opposite angle. Equals little b, which is 15, over the sine of big B. And we cross multiply and divide. So sine of 29. times 15 divided by 8, 0. 0.9090. I'm sure sound like Mark from Mark there for a second. I just realized most of the room probably doesn't have any clue who that is. There you go. So it's inverse sine of 0. 0.9090. 65.37 degrees is what we come up with. But we know that B has to be obtuse. So it is the supplement of that. We subtract it from 180 to get 114.63 degrees. And that is our angle. Which makes C up here 36.37 degrees. We add them up and subtract from 180. Correct? So now we can find side C because we still have 8 over the sine of 29 degrees equals little c over the sine of 36.37 degrees. And we cross multiply and divide. 8 times the sine of 36.37 degrees divided by the sine of 29 degrees. 9.79 is C. How many of you had that? Any questions? Not so bad? Let's look at our second possibility here then. This one We'll label it ABC, ABC. We are told, somebody want to just give me the angle so I don't have to scroll up and down. What was A? 42. 42. 61 degrees. And little A is how, my, how big? So, uh, I know B is 
B is 12 feet. 12 feet. Okay. So yes, we can very quickly find angle C. Adding those two up is 103 degrees. Subtract from 180. 180 minus 61 minus 42 is 77 degrees. Now we're going to have to be used to our pictures not being drawn to scale because until we start calculating, we have no idea how big these angles are. So drawing them out is going to be, you just have to draw it out and start labeling things. So now, of course, we can find our missing sides. One, the easy scenario yesterday, of course, is when we had two angles on one side because we can find that third angle just by subtraction. And finding the missing sides is the easy part. So we've got the side and its opposite angle, 12 over the sine of 61 degrees. That's going to equal little a over the sine of 42, which would also equal little c over the sine of 77. And I'm going to set it up like this so that I can cheat and do this all at once. So I'm going to cross multiply and divide here. 12 times sine of 42 divided by sine of 61. Gives me A is 9.18 feet. Correct? Should be a little bit smaller than B because the angle is a little bit smaller than B. Did you get something different? Yeah, 10.196. Let me try it, see if I punched in something wrong. I think you hit another number. 12 times the sine of 42 divided by the sine. 61, 9.18. No, 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 no. It's 42 is angle A, 61 is angle B. Yep. So it's 12 times the sine of 42 divided by the sine of 61. Nine point one eight. Okay. You might have hit cosine accidentally. Would have made that slight switch. Would have been about the right. Well, I could have did forty-two degrees. Maybe. That might have happened. Yeah. Okay. So now. Yeah, we could have. Yeah, that wouldn't have hurt it. Yeah. I just haven't really specified around it. We could do nine point one eight one. It'd be good. So then, now we can cross multiply here. 12, I'm just ignoring this middle piece for now. 12 times sine of 77 divided by sine of 61. And again, that makes sense. 77 is bigger than 61, so that side should be bigger than 12. Next. So A, B, C. For a third example, what I give for angle A? I didn't. Didn't write it down? <coughs> Anybody write down the third example? What I give you for information? A is 34. Side A is 70. Yep. Side B is 50. Okay. Now, I notice I didn't tell you whether B was obtuse or acute. Should throw off that red flag, though. This opposite side is smaller than the other sides. So that should show up that, throw up that red flag. But if we set this up, well, you don't know. It could be either one. But 7 over sine of 34 degrees equals 15 over sine of B. We cross multiply and divide. Sine of 34 times 15 divided by 7. 1.199. Now, I'm going to stop right there because what's wrong? Sign can't be over one. So that tells us this doesn't form a triangle. This side is not long enough to reach down here at all. 
So it doesn't matter whether B is acute or obtuse because it just doesn't hit the triangle. B doesn't exist. It never hits it. It never gets created. So the other possibility we ran into last time. So like we said, if you have two angles in one side, it's easy. You can always use a lot of signs. If you have two sides in one angle, we got all those issues of if that opposite side is smaller than the second side, we've got, you could have two triangles. You could, it doesn't, could be that it doesn't even make a triangle. Or if you have two sides in one angle, it could look like this. So I'm going to label this A, B, C, little A, little B, little C. Can I use a lot of signs here? What do we always have to look for? An angle and its opposite side. Do I have an angle and its opposite Well, I only have one angle, right? The 51. Do I have its opposite side? No, I do not have an angle and its opposite side. I don't have that pair. Cannot use law of signs. And that is where the law of cosines comes to our rescue. Now the law of sines is nice and simple and clean. Law of cosines, not so much. Yes, it was. The first part there should look awfully familiar. This is the Pythagorean theorem, right? The law of cosines is often called the generalized Pythagorean theorem. It is for triangles that don't have a right angle. It is the a squared plus b squared equals c squared with a correction factor in it for the fact that the angle, in this case angle c, is not a right angle. Um, we just forced it to be. C is the missing side. Yeah. I always relabel my triangles to make C the missing side. That way this formula fits right in. But whatever C is, it doesn't matter what the labels are. C is the missing side. A and B are the two sides you're given. Exactly. So our correction factor, this is where it differs from the Pythagorean theorem, is this little thing right here. Minus 2 times side A times side B times the cosine of angle C. Now you'll note, if C were 90 degrees, what's the cosine of 90 degrees? Zero. So th that correction factor would be zero. This would be just the Pythagorean theorem. So this is what they call, they call it the generalized Pythagorean theorem. It's for every triangle. It turns in just a, a squared plus b squared to c squared when that c is 90 degrees. We have a right angle. So let's fill in here. c squared is going to be 18 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 18 times 20 times the cosine of 51 degrees. Now, when I punch this in my calculator, the first thing I notice is the C is squared, so that means I'm going to have to do a square root. So I'm going to punch in second square root, then I'm just going to punch her in. 18 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 18 times 20 times cosine 51. There's 51. And I hit enter, and it gives me that C is 16.459. 2 is a constant, yes. That is a constant. That's always there. <clears throat> you will now notice, now that I have that side... I do have a side in its opposite angle, or an angle in its opposite side. So now it's just back to the law of sine. 
over the sine of 51 degrees equals 18 over the sine of which angle? 18 would be over the sine of A. And then also equal to 20 over the sine of angle B. So I pick up my proportions, cross multiply and divide, and I can find my other two angles. Which one? Now, here's the big question. Obviously, I'm going to have to use this one because that's my side and its opposite angle. Which one of these two do I want to use first? Angle A or angle B? There is a correct answer to this. I want to use angle A first. The reason why its opposite side is the smaller of the two. In a triangle, how many angles can be obtuse? One. Now, since the largest angle is always opposite the largest side, this, the angle that's opposite the largest side is the only angle that can be obtuse, right? Does that make sense? Since 20 is the largest side, there is a possibility that B could be an obtuse angle. So if I used this one first, if it came out to be like 83 degrees or something like that, is it really 83 or is it 97? You know what I'm saying? But this one, we know has to be acute. And once I have two angles, there is no doubt what the third angle has to be because we're just going to subtract from 180. So I would cross, multiply, and divide here. Sine of 51 times 18 divided by sine of, or divided by 14.59, 549. 16.459. I don't know where the heck that always comes from. Gives us the point 0.8499. We're going to inverse sine that. So second sine is that answer. 58.20 degrees. So now we can add that to the 51. That's 109.20. This is 70.80 degrees. So we know B is actually acute because when we do the subtraction, it comes out to be acute. Now, said so most of the time you'd be okay doing this one because most of the time it's an acute triangle. But it is always safest to use the smaller side to find its opposite angle first because you know A has to be acute. B is the only one here that could possibly be obtuse. And in order to keep from having to guess, we just go ahead and find A first, and then we find B by subtracting from 180. And then you would relabel the triangle? Well, I would relabel the triangle however I wanted to. But when it comes right down to it, these are, I mean, the, the angles are A, B, and C. So when it comes down to answering the question, I've got to put them back into terms of the original A, B, and C. But I can relabel them for calculating. I always relabel them so that this angle I have is angle C, and this missing side is side C. So that it fits into this formula so I don't have to guess. Now, I'll be honest, Richard. I've gotten to the point where I don't think in terms of A, B, and C anymore. I just think of my two sides and the angle included. So it's, you know, the first side squared plus the second side squared minus 2 times the first side times the second side times the cosine of the angle. I don't think in terms of A, B, and C anymore because I've done this enough. But if you're just trying to plug it into this formula, yeah, relabel it. But... You know, don't cross off the original labels. Just write it beside there so that you use your penciled-in labels to put them in the formula. But then when you come back, you label the angles here. So let's say this was originally side C or angle C, and you change it to angle A so it fit our formula. Well, when you find out what this angle is, that this is 58.2 degrees, when you go to write your answer, and you still have to label it C because it was originally angle C. So you've got to be able to translate back to the original labels. In the packet I gave you guys yesterday... Page 382 to 385. There's 18 through 42. I do not expect you to be able to do all these. I don't expect you to even be good at these since we only did one example. But we will do more tomorrow. Any triangle. All triangles have six parts, right? Three sides, three angles. If you have three out of the six sides, or three out of the six pieces, 
you can always solve for the rest of the triangle unless the three pieces are all three angles because then it can be you know, enlarged or reduced but you can even have all three sides and you can still find the angles which is probably one of the most difficult applications of law of sines and cosines and we will show you that tomorrow before we're done